Well, PNB Housing is the next uh, company that we are speaking with. Uh, now, since uh, Q2 of F520, the uh, 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 company's assets under management have uh, fallen by more than two, uh, 23,700 crores. Their loan book in uh, second quarter of FI23 recorded the best growth in 14 quarters, up 2.7% quarter on quarter. Of course, I mean, uh, they've got uh, a new man at the top as well, uh, Girish Kozgi, Managing Director and CEO at the company jo now joins us. Mr. Kozgi, great to have you back on the program. Thank you very much uh, uh, for your time. How are efforts to kind of uh, accelerate growth at PNB Housing going? Uh, because you know, this is a time uh, when uh, where interest rates, of course, have moved up quite a bit. Uh, there is, of course, twofold impact, right? Uh, there is impact for consumers, sentiment-wise, and second for players like you, uh, who are not banks. Uh, so, uh, just tell us. I mean, how's what's happening uh, at PNB since the last time we spoke? Good morning, Prashant. I think if you look at the industry after COVID from uh, 2020 October, I think market is doing very well. It came back quite strongly. And that is continuing, you know, to say that uh, the entire housing finance industry is in sweet spot. And same thing is true for every single company, including PNB Housing, going forward. Now, after the last, uh, you know, uh, our engagement after quarter two results, I had mentioned that plan for PNB Housing in terms of growth uh, and also in terms of margins. I think uh, the story is pretty strong. We're going to focus uh, largely on uh, retail. And uh, all uh, the companies have to do now is to just ensure that they focus on basics, uh, try to uh, capture the opportunity, what is there available in the market. And I'm sure every company will do well. This will ensure that there would be growth in disbursements. I had mentioned that uh, starting from next year onwards, uh, the growth in disbursement is going to be in the range of 22 to 25%. And the book growth will be about 17 to 18%. In terms of margins, uh, I had mentioned after quarter two results that a spread of 2.2 and a NIM of 3.2, at least for next few quarters. Mm. So I think the story is quite strong. Uh, demand is back. Economic activity is completely you know, up sure. and running in the country. In terms of interest rate hike, I think you, know, you spoke about that. If you look at the rates probably four years back, I think rates are much higher than what it is today. I think once COVID started, rates started coming down and it saw the bottom and the rates went as low as 6.75 in terms of offering and then rates started you know, moving up. So whenever the rate goes up, I think for some time there will be you know, a little bit of impact, but that is short term. After that, I think market will adjust, customers will adjust and then it will come back to normalcy. And I'm sure you know, this will also, uh, you know, going forward, will uh, enable growth. Okay. You've also started an affordable housing uh, segment called Roshni and last time we spoke with you, you had indicated that 25% of your business will come from the affordable housing segment. Uh, can you tell us how it's doing so far and what kind of growth are you hoping to see? Uh, in fact, last time also I mentioned we've just started. I think it will kick start in quarter four of this year. Okay. And I think uh, going forward incrementally, uh, contribution from uh, affordable or Roshni is going to contribute about 25 percent. Hmm. Okay, right. uh, so, all right. got that. So, uh, can you tell us a little bit, I mean, what is the, uh, say, incremental cost of funds versus what the cost of funds were earlier? I mean, what are you looking at for a target in uh, by the end of FY23? Uh, I think I'll not be able to share specific details because of our, you know, we have filed DLOF. So I think generally, if you talk about uh, the industry, I think rates had, uh, I think it's almost uh, peaked. And we could see that with the last uh, repo increase as well. I think earlier the increase used to be about 0.5. I think this time it was uh, less than 0.5. I think it is almost peaked. Maybe we might see one more increase, maybe 0.25 to 0.3. I think all the companies have aligned to that. And uh, most of the companies have passed on the rate increase to the customers because the general trend is that the rates were increasing. And therefore, uh, typically, most of the companies would not get impacted by rate highs because they would be able to maintain uh, margin since they have passed on to the customers. It's interesting that you've uh, started, uh, you know, the affordable loan segment at a time when all the other competitors, etc., are looking to move uh, to the mid and higher segment category. This also at a time when the rundown in your loan book has been, uh, you know, lower 11 quarters in a row for the AUM. Can you give us a, give us a sense of uh, how long is this rundown likely to continue? What's your outlook here? 
uh yeah in fact i had mentioned last time that we are going to grow from next year onwards which means that you know the rundown will get arrested and there will be growth in book and disbursement as well number one number two in terms of if you look at any company you take the largest bank the largest hfc you know mid size hfc or the bank any company i think they are pre- predominantly into top uh, you know three segments one is uh, super prime prime and affordable income based so no you can't say that there is a company which is not into affordable every single institution today they are into affordable maybe the mix could be different so affordable is something you know where the growth is very very high and every single uh, you know whether it is bank or hfc or mbfc are getting into affordable space and i think it has got a lot of you know, potential to be uh, seen in future so uh, which is why all the companies are getting into it yeah with respect to bnb housing not that we were not doing affordable we were doing affordable but the mix was quite low i think going forward we want to increase that share because we see a lot of potential in that segment mm. uh in terms of vision i think it is said that you hope to uh, hit the 1 lakh crore loan book uh, mark i mean uh, organizationally mr kosgi are you having to make any changes or i mean uh, it's at the end of the day a customer facing business right uh or is is uh, is everything on track as you said you began by saying just focus on the basics i mean so uh organizationally is all set see it's all set last time also i had mentioned i just repeat for the benefit of our viewers so what it said was when i said we should focus on basics i was talking about the profile mix i think most skewed towards salaried going forward vis a vis compared to self employed in terms of product more skewed towards home is a we compared to non home in terms of uh, segments will be more focused on retail both on prime business and affordable we would as of now we are degrowing a corporate book after few quarters once we bring down npa to comfortable level we will restart in a totally different format i think going forward uh, corporate uh, you know uh, within the overall portfolio would be about less than 10% mm. Right. Uh, just quickly before we let you go, uh, uh, you know, Mr. Kosgi, uh, are you acquiring any talent from Canfin Homes into uh, PNB Housing? Uh, see, PNB Housing is a top-class housing finance company in the country. Mm-hmm. So, uh, as our hiring strategy, we do hire from you know all the banks, be it large, mid-size, small banks. institutions which is nbfc and hfc mm. and if it so happens that you know we were we are able to get couple of them from the company you mentioned i think we would be open to it mm. all right uh, thanks a lot uh, for joining in and all the best uh, that's uh, pnb housing finance for the market it is getting a bit worse now.